Still on the subject, the great light is here. Somebody say the great light is here. Say, I am the great light. And I am here to lighten up my generation. So quickly, we're going to begin to, we're going to run from there. We have established the kind of lights we are discussing. We've said so much about it, but two things, you know, by way of introduction this morning, we must understand that there is what is called Jesus Christ, the living word of God. So when we talk about light, remember I told us that there is the indwelling light, there is the light that represents the person of Jesus Christ, and there is also what is called the revealed insight or, or wisdom of God, which is also a light. So I'm trying to make sure that we understand as we go from one place to the other, understanding what it is we're talking about to be able to drive it home appropriately. So here this morning, by way of introduction, to bring us again into remembrance that Christ, Jesus Christ, is the living word of God. Somebody say, Jesus is the living word of God. Yeah, for, thank you so much. In John chapter 1, we see it established that, that Jesus is the living word of God. Jesus remains the living word of God. But the Bible is the written word of God. The Bible is the written word of God. So we have Jesus Christ as what? As the living word of God that we see. And the Bible is also what? The written word of God. So you have two words of God. You have the passing word of God. And then you have what? The written word of God. Are you following? It is important and imperative for us to understand these two dimensions of light. Because Jesus Christ as a person is light. And out of his light, he has given us light to become light also. But not only that, in his word is also his light. The word of God is the light of God. So when we begin to talk about how to access light, we're talking about how to access light from the written word of God. So again, we have what? The living word of God. Jesus Christ as the living word of God. And your Bible is what? Please, you need to believe it because if you don't believe in the authenticity and the authority of the Bible, you will not see the Bible as the written word of God. Let me clear this here that there are two authors of the Bible. You have the authors of the Bible, the person, a human being, and then you also have what? The Holy Spirit. For instance, I am preaching now and you are writing what I'm saying. The Holy Spirit is inspiring me. I'm speaking and you are writing what I am saying. Now you're going to put your name here because I'm not the one that wrote the Bible. And you're going to say Malachi. Then tomorrow, your great-grandchildren sees it. So this is the book of Daddy Malachi. You understand? Is it now Malachi that inspired what was wrote, written down here? No, the Holy Spirit is the one that inspires whatever is written. So when somebody tells you that white people wrote the Bible, yes, white people wrote the Bible, black people wrote the Bible, Jewish people wrote the Bible, human beings wrote the Bible. Don't take that because if you take that, you can never see the Word of God as the final authority when it comes to the Word of God. Are you hearing me? So it is very, very imperative that we establish this this morning that you have Jesus, you know, Christ, the person who is also the word of God, the living word of God. And you have also the Bible, which is what the written word of God. Second thing to note, by way of introduction, and how do we assess light? We assess light through the written word of God. There is a light that is indwelling. We don't need to access that light. We don't need to search that light. We don't need to read that light. If we want to understand the, 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 the person of Christ, we understand, it, we understand the person of Christ through the word of God. That is why it's very, very important for us to make sure that we are students of the Bible. That's why Bible school is different, is, is good, sorry. Bible study is very, very important for every believer if you must have a solid foundation. Because there are many people in the church that don't believe that the word of God is the final authority. There are some that are coming to church that don't believe that the word of God is the word of God. Some has been in the church for so long they have practiced Christianity they have done so many things with God they have had experiences with God but they have they've gotten to the point now where they are wondering is Bible actually true why because their relationship with God is just by experience there are people that believe in the Bible because what the Bible said has happened to them. But it, it takes more than that. The Bible is a, it's a book that has been tried, tested, but that's not where I'm going this morning. My assignment is not to prove the validity of the Bible, but I wanted you to have that at the back of your mind so that it will help you to be able to take the steps I'm going to introduce us into if we want to access light. We have seen what light can do for us. So second, way, uh, second thing by way of introduction is that the message of the Bible is not the personal opinion of the human writers. The message of the Bible is not the personal opinion of the writers or the human writers. No. So when you take the Bible, they are not telling you their personal opinion. That is why when they ask me questions regarding 
um, you know, same-sex marriage. I tell them, I don't have any opinion. I am a slave of Jesus Christ. I'm a servant of Jesus Christ. Whatever my master says is the final authority. So if you want to know what I feel about any subject matter, look at the Bible. Whatever the Bible says about it, that is my stand on that matter. Are you following me? So it is very, very important for us to know these two things, that the message of the Bible is not the personal opinion of the human writer. Are you getting what I'm saying now? So whatever Paul wrote is not Paul's personal opinion. Although somewhere, Apostle Paul will say, I speak by my, using my office. But even in that speaking, he's still inspired by the Holy Spirit to say whatever needs to be said. So quickly this morning, we began to look at how do we connect to these lights. Now, how do we connect to which light? The written word, which is the Bible, light from the word of God, insight and revelation. You feel in churches where you hear people say, God said to me, and some of you feel so intimidated that somebody say, oh, the Lord said to me, the Lord said to me. Oftentimes, it's not that God, God appeared to them in the night of the vision or in the dream like he did with what's his name, Solomon. They are reading the word of God, and from the pages of scripture, God is talking to them. You have the same Bible and you're saying, ah, why is it that I can't hear God, I can't hear God. You can't hear God until you see God from the pages of scriptures. Are you hearing me? So oftentimes you see men of God or people that think they are, they are very they are working with God and they use those words. I heard God, God said to me clearly, God said to me directly and you are feeling intimidated. No, you have access to the voice of God. You understand the language of God. God, you understand the voice of God as a believer. It is your inheritance as a believer to know the voice of your father. Are you hearing me? To know the voice of your father. It doesn't matter who comes to my house and pretend to be me. If it's not me, it can never be me. My children can detect it from afar. Even when I try to fake it sometimes with first lady, call her and pretend to be another guy on the line, she will say, honey. Yeah, sometimes I do crazy stuff like that. I use other line and then I call her. I say, I, I saw you at the mall. You know, you gave me your number. You know, and all that stuff. <laughs> you know, so, so regardless what happens, she knows my voice. He says, my sheep hears my voice and also they know my voice. So as a child of God, you should know the voice of God. But oftentimes, we think the Bible is talking about the audible voice of God. The, the voice of God is in the word of God. Somebody say the voice of God is in the word of God. So quickly, run with me this morning. So we're saying, how do we now connect to this light we're talking about? The indwelling, you know, the light of God, revelational light or what we call insight, insight, insight. I said here, the first thing I established is that you must be saved. You must have a relationship with Christ. Last time I spoke, I said that the second thing is that it's, you, it's the Holy Spirit that guides us, you know, to be able to see and know what God is saying. Because every time you pick up the Bible, you know, and you're not engaging the person of the Holy Spirit, what is happening is that you're only interacting with the writer and not the one that inspired the Bible. So that is what happens. You go to Bible college and then they teach you all kinds of things and then you see people that are theologians and yet they're not practicing the word of God. They're just teaching it because that's how they get paid. You can read the Bible. When the Holy Spirit is not involved in the Bible, in you studying the word of God, you will be interacting with the other writer. Remember, there are two writers of the Bible. So oftentimes we spend five hours, six hours interacting with the writers of the Bible without interacting with the one that inspired the Bible. Imagine if I write a book and you go and you read the book. It's not going to be the same thing like me now doing Bible, uh, studying my book with you or doing book with you teaching you from my pages, right? You're going to get something, more inspiration, more understanding. So when you read the Bible without the person of the Holy Spirit, you may end up getting more confused. And I pray for you from today, you will honor the person of the Holy Spirit all the days of your life. So the third thing, the third way we access light or we connect to light is what I call by dwelling and beholding. Somebody say dwelling and beholding. Dwelling. By dwelling and beholding. But Brother Henry, what are you saying? You know, dwelling in his presence is one thing. You know, because they said that, you know, what, you know, uh, 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 um, dwelling in his presence, you know, simply saying, camping with God, you know, positioning yourself to be able to access light. It's not just what you do casually when you're studying the word of God. You must be ready. You must be equipped. Oftentimes we tell people, get a pen and a paper ready. You know, sit like you're expecting to hear something from God. Sometimes people come to me to have meetings and, and they just walk into my office casually for, for important meetings. And I will tell them, I said, so what are we doing here? So I came for the meeting. I said, so are you not going to write anything? 
you need to take notes and write something because as we are talking here, ideas will be flying, inspirations will be coming, and all these things need to be noted. It's the same approach when you're studying the Word of God. You should have your, if it's a tablet, if it's keyboard, somewhere you'll be able to type in something. You must expect that you're here to hear what God is saying to you. Are you following what I'm teaching this morning? So you don't just approach the word of God casually. That's why we say, bring your book, bring your note, bring something to write with so that heaven is, heaven is aware that you came to learn, you came to find out something, you came to hear from God. So come prepared by dwelling in the presence of God. Not just that, you know, he that walks with the wise you know, shall be wise also. So when you come into the place of fellowship and intimacy with God, it gives you access to light. In this instance, sometimes you're not studying the word. You are not reading the word. You have read it before you meditated and you've just moved on. And then all of a sudden, because you're camping with God, you're dwelling with God, you're walking with the wise, the wisdom of God just starts dropping. You could be in the bathroom and the wisdom of God drops. You could be in the car driving and the wisdom of God just drops. It's an idea. God gives you confirmation. You could even look at something and God speaks to you through that thing and that gives you the answer you've been looking for. So you must stay in the presence, not only when you're studying the word of God, but live with the, with the consciousness of his presence and that will help you to access light. Then, the other dwelling, again I said association, brings what? Assimilation. Association brings assimilation. Who you camp with determines what accomplishes you. Who you camp with determines what accomplishes you. You know, Pastor Paul Enenche uses this a lot. That association brings assimilation. And who you are camping with is what determines what accomplishes you. You see, the sun and the moon. The, the sun, for the moon to be able to shine, the moon has to do what? It needs to camp around what? The sun. For the moon to shine, there's a place that the, the moon had to position itself. If it does not position itself right there, I'm not a science student, so just roll with me. All right. If it does not position itself accurately, what happens is that the moon will not be able to, to shine. So if you want to, your light to shine, you must do what? You must camp with the one that is the light himself. So who you camp with determines what accompany you and association, you know, brings what assimilation. So as you're studying the word of God, God's voice, God's way is entering you. And I'm praying for someone here that the last time you miss it will be the last time you will miss it again. Amen. Please say amen. I just prophesy amen. as the Lord lays in my hand. So we're talking about dwelling and beholding. Dwelling also is dwelling in the word of God. Dwelling in the word of God, you know, through meditation. Dwelling in the word of God through meditation, right? If you're writing Dwelling in the word of God through what? Meditation. Meditation is the major channel through which we access light. Not just reading the word of God, but meditation. If you see those that have seen light in the word of God, they are men and women that are given to meditation. Meditation. Meditation will medicate you. Are you hearing me? Medication is what you need to be medicated in the word of God. You know, you are sick. If somebody that is sick that is medicated, right? You give them medication. If you're sick in any area, when you meditate on the word of God, you catch light. You catch light. You catch light. You catch light. By what? By meditation. A lot of us don't meditate on the word of God. I tell people, you don't need to finish 20 chapters in one week. No. Sometimes it's religion. That you're pushing, okay, I must read four chapters. Ask your pastor. Sometimes I don't even get past one chapter or two chapters. Why? Of the Bible. Why? Because I'm constantly meditating. Because I'm a teacher. So every time I pick up the Bible, unless I intentionally say, I just want to read or I want to listen to. But the moment I open the pages of scripture, somehow God starts speaking to me from there. How am I going to finish 10 chapters and come and pray to you? I finish 10 chapters of the Bible every day. Glory to God. How many chapters do you read? Don't let anybody intimidate you. You can read 20 chapters and get no light and I can pick up one verse and have light that will sort out my problem. And that's where we need to get to. It takes medication. I'm sorry, meditation. And meditation only happens when you dwell in the word of God. Psalm 119 verse 97, TPT translation. Psalm 119 verse 97. He said, oh, I love the treasure, the revelations of your word. Throughout the day, I do what? I fill my heart with what? With its light. Again, he said, no, keep me there. I know you're trying to be faster than me. Thank you. He said, oh, I love and treasure the revelation of your word, of your word. Through the day, Throughout what? The day. I fill my heart with what? So, where is he getting the light from? Where is he getting the light from? From the word of God. So, when you dwell in the word of God, what you access 
con is converted in the place of medica meditation, it is now converted into what? Into light. And light is wisdom. Somebody say wisdom. Until you meditate, you cannot access wisdom. Because it's true medi meditation. Okay now. Hola. What, what is me what, what, okay? This medication is coming out more than meditation. So true meditation, what happens to is that we now convert knowledge into understanding, and now the final product becomes what? Wisdom. I think I love that. Through meditation, we convert knowledge into what? Understanding, and the final product of that is what is called wisdom. Remember that wisdom is applied knowledge. I think I like that. Do you like that? So I said here, what is meditation? Meditation is simply, you know, letting and thinking on the word of God. It's simply thinking on that word of God. Letting, living on that word and thinking on it. Thinking on the word of God and asking questions on the word of God. You see, every teacher you see today of the word of God is somebody that simply asks questions when they are studying the word of God. If you don't ask, God will not tell. So you can read, but if you see someone that is studying the word of God, it's when you begin to think on the word of God that you begin to meditate on the word of God. So thinking is needed for meditation. You know, seeing the word of God and seeing the word of God as addressing you, not addressing people. Are you hearing me? It is med meditation that brings you to see the word of God as addressing you. Remember, light, I told us the other time, that light is personal. Personal. There is what's called general light and there is what's called personal light specifically for you at that moment. Because you know what? We are not at the same place at the same time. We are not dealing with the same thing at all times. So when I'm preaching here, you see me sometimes, I do this, I do that, and then the Holy Spirit drops something inside of me. Why? Because in the multitude of people that are seated here, their faces are different, so does their problem and challenges differ. So when you are studying the word of God, the word of God, God will give you the light you need at that moment to be able to do what? To destroy the power of darkness. I pray for you that you will never be a victim of the powers of darkness anymore in the name of Jesus Christ. See this. In Matthew chapter 2, verse 6, verse 22. Matthew 6, 22. Look at what the Bible says there. It says, if your eyes be single, then your whole body will be filled with light. Please pay attention to this because we use this a lot when we are talking about leadership, we are talking about vision, we are talking about planning, we are talking about businesses and all that stuff. But look at what the Bible says here. It says, no, give me the translation I said you should put there. Give me in NLT. I just quoted the, the uh, uh, NKJ people. Give me the NLT. Give me the NLT. The NLT says, it says, your eyes is like what? That provides what? For what? When your eyes is what? Healthy. Your whole body will be what? So what do you use to read the word of God? You need your eyes. But here, the Lord said to me that he's talking about your eyes of understanding. There is what is called the physical light and there is what is called the eyes of understanding. And that is what the devil steals from those that are yet to know God. He said, because the word of the prince of this world has blinded their eyes of understanding, so they are not able to see the true gospel of Christ. So it is important and imperative for us as a believer that when you're studying the word of God, make sure that you're not using your natural eyes to study the word of God, but you put on your eyes of understanding. He said, when your eyes of understanding is single, to be single means to be, you know, to have a targeted subject that you're on, right? You are focusing on the issue of marriage. You are focusing on why can I get married? You are focusing on why are things not working for me? You are focusing on healing. You are focusing on your fruitfulness. He said when you have a targeted subject that you are pursuing, he said it is there that it becomes easy for your whole body to be filled with light. And once your whole body catches that light, no one can talk you out of it. You now know what to do. You know the step to take. What I'm teaching us here is practical. That's how I live my life. I'm not poor, I'm not stagnated, I'm not, uh, I'm not sick, I'm not struggling in any area. Because every area I find challenge, there is challenge in what do I do? I go for life, even in leadership. Even in leadership. What is God calling you for? What have you been anointed for? Have you gone to such light in that area? Because until you find light in it, you will continue to live like you're under the oppression of the devil. But today, I decree that your eyes of understanding will be opened. 
And that is what we use in the place of meditation. And it's in the med- a place of meditation that our eyes become single, focusing on one subject, one issue. And then at the end of the day, our life, when you say your whole body, means your life is filled with lights. Why? Because you have taken time to focus on the issue of prosperity. You have taken time to focus on the issue of marital bliss. You have taken time to focus on the issue of good health and sound mind, relationship, you know, business, how to do life in general. Let me tell you, what solves every problem in this world is wisdom. Somebody say wisdom. What solves every problem in this world is what is wisdom. And this book, this is not Bible. The book, Bible is here. I can't find the ordinary, real Bible. I just looked here now. Everybody has tablet. Some don't have anything. Some have purse and bag. But does anybody have real Bible? Normal Bible? Ah, uh, thank you. Yes, thank you, my friend. Yeah. It's, he has not stayed here too long. Very soon now, he will give this out. <laughs> what did I say? Every problem you have, every challenge you have, the answer is what? Wisdom. The answer is what? Every problem, whether it's money problem, children problem, finance problem, marriage problem, ministry problem, even you're dealing with pastor problem. Any problem you have, the solution is where? In the Bible. It's in the Bible. So, it's the answer to every problem. So, when you're able to Assess the word of God. Some of you, you read Psalm. Read Psalm because all your life, something has been chasing you. You read Psalm to sleep. You want to eat, you quote Psalm. You want to sleep, you quote Psalm. You want to take your shower, you lay hands on the water, you pray Psalm. You get in the car, you pray Psalm. When have you looked at the book of Proverbs last? (laughs) And gain wisdom and knowledge. Psalm will help you fight your enemy. After you finish fighting the enemy, What's next? So spend time, look at the book of all the teenagers here. Go and look at the book of, what is it called? Proverbs. There's a young boy that I know that was eating the book of Proverbs, but it's not reflecting in his life. So I don't know. I think he was just reading it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, 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 was, he was eating the book of Proverbs. And I was so excited because the book of Proverbs is the book of wisdom. It's the book written by a man that tried life and failed woefully. What he did, he now put every mistake he made into the book of Proverbs so that when you read it, sir, you can't fail the way he failed. That's why I tell people, don't learn from your own mistake. Go and learn from Solomon's mistake. A man that God gave wisdom and ended up marrying a bunch of wives and how he ended up losing his salvation, almost died before his time. I pray for you that you will pursue wisdom. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, pursue wisdom. Pursue wisdom. <laughs> Inside wisdom is health. Inside wisdom is sound mind. Inside wisdom is prosperity. Every problem we have in this world, the Nigerian problem needs wisdom to be solved. The American problem needs wisdom to be solved. The Prince William County problem needs wisdom to be solved. The problem of drug needs wisdom to be solved. It is wisdom. The problem of teenage in drugs and other stuff needs wisdom to be solved. You know the wisdom that one needs? Responsible parents. That's the wisdom. When you have responsible parents, you have responsible teenagers. Irresponsible parents will raise irresponsible I'm still on point number one. So, beholding. We talked about dwelling and beholding. Beholding. Looking unto Jesus. Looking unto Jesus. In Psalm 36 verse 9. He said, in thy light we see, we see light. In your light we have light. If we need light, we connect to the master light, Jesus himself. When you look at Jesus, you can tap light into it. So, the word of God is what? The Bible is what? The written word of God. And then Jesus Christ is what? The living word of God. Where can you find the living word of God? The living word of God is also in the written word of God. So some of you, you're waiting to have an encounter. I need an encounter. I need Jesus Christ to show up in my room. Oh God, appear. Oh God, appear. Some of you, if you appear, you will run. Joshua said, I saw the Lord. I want to see the Lord. As I saw the Lord, let me see the Lord. I had done pray those useless prayers. I see the Lord every day in the pages of scripture. That's where I go and see him. Have I ever told you that the Lord appeared to me? You people don't know I can do other stuff. The Lord appeared to me. Some of you will not be intimidated. Pastors, they know how to mess people up. 
So you keep looking at them, running to them. No. The Lord can appear to you through the pages of scripture. It will come at life. Life. There are things we have crossed, you know, recently. And it was the word God gave me. Every time I was eating it, quoting it, morning, afternoon. Anytime the devil says it's not going to work, I say you're a liar. Remember the scripture says. That's what Jesus wants. The Bible said in Romans chapter 8. You know, all things work together for good for them that love God. And are called according to his purpose. I am called according to his purpose. God has called me also. This is in line with God's agenda for me. All things work together. Hey, I will call the bank, you will work for me. Hey, Priscilla Kansi, you will work for me. Hey, you, you will work for me. Every name, I gather their name and I will call them and say, Sir, you are going to work for me. Why? And then he went further and then he says, if God be for you, who can be against you? I said, Kai, if God is for me, who can be against me? Sir, you can't be against this project. Ma, you can't stand against the project. You can't get in the way of the Lord. All I'm using is scripture. If you enter where I'm doing this, you think something has happened to me, Pastor has colo. But no, I'm spiritually colo because I'm dealing with very wicked, strange demons, the gods of this land. Yes. But I'm using scriptures to, to mesmerize them. Light is what you use to de demystify mysteries. Light, wisdom of God. Wisdom of God. Wisdom of God. What was I saying? <laughs> okay, light, wisdom of God. <laughs> You're good students. So, we're talking about, yes, that in his light, we see, we see light. Second Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. Stay with me. Second Corinthians chapter 3, verse, verse 18. But before we do that, we see in Psalm 119, verse 18. Psalm 119, verse 18. He said, open my eyes that I may behold what? wondrous things out of thy law. That I may behold wondrous things out of thy law. You can leave that scripture there. Open my eyes of understanding that I may behold what wondrous things. That I may behold mysteries to, this, to demystify the, 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 the demonic and satanic agendas. So give me now that's the Corinthians chapter 3 verse 18 TPT translation. The Bible says, and we all with unveiled face. Give me this thing in TPT. Yeah, I'll be holding him as in the mirror. Okay, leave it there, leave it there, leave it there, leave it there. Go back, go back, go back, go back, go back, go back. Give me the same NKJV, NKJV. I want to take a word from there. Thank you, Holy Spirit. He said, but, but we all with unveiled face, beholding we are as in a mirror. What are we seeing? The glory of the Lord are being what? Transformed into same image from glory to glory just as the spirit of Christ. So, when we look at the mirror, who do we see? You don't know. You don't see yourself. When you look at the mirror, who you're seeing is the image of Jesus. So, the mirror is not to reflect you. The mirror is to reflect the person of Christ. Because what you don't see, you cannot become. I think there was a day, I don't know if it was Joshua Samuel, one of them said it, that when you look at this when you look at a natural mirror, what you see is your image. But when you look at the mirror of the word of God, what you are seeing is the image of Christ. And the essence of that is that what you are seeing will make you see what you are supposed to become. Who you are supposed to become. How married you are supposed to be. How family is supposed to be. How you are supposed to do business. How you are supposed to pass up. How you are supposed to be a politician. How you are supposed to be a lawyer. The kind of person you are, so when you look at this mirror, what you are seeing is Christ himself mirroring himself, exposing himself to you. Are you, are you understand what I'm saying? Some of you have been to a shrine. You know how you do that? They will do stuff and then bring and they say, who, you, who do you see there? You look at the mirror, you're not seeing yourself, you're seeing your auntie. Or you're seeing your enemy in the mirror. You're laughing. If you've not been there, you probably have watched it in Nigerian movies. But it's Christ you see. I pray that prayer sometimes when I send some things. I say, Lord, wherever they put any mirror calling my name, let Jesus appear. Amen. Now your amen is loud. <laughs> Give me that same scripture in, in TPT. Are you learning something? I'm teaching you. He said, but we, okay, TPT, help me. He said, we can all draw close to him with the veil removed from our face. With no veil will all become like who? Like mirrors who brightly reflect what? The glory of Jesus Christ. So, we, we, we reflect brightly. When you see the word bright, what does that signify? Lights. Brightly, we are reflected. And I say here, yeah, there is a light 
in the mirror that has the capacity to light us up. There is a light in the mirror that has the capacity to light up the beholder. Remember, he said, in his light we we'll see light. In that Psalm 36, verse 9, in his light we we'll see light. So there is a light inside that mirror that has the capacity to light up the beholders. So as we behold him in the glass, in the mirror, he's lighting us. And I said, as we behold him, we are lighted, brightened to reflect. Because what reflects is what is bright. If you're not brightened, you cannot reflect. So the, the mirror brightens us so we cannot begin to do what? To reflect the glory of God. So there are many Christians that are not reflecting the glory of God because they are not looking at the mirror that can change us. I said the proof that you have beheld him in the mirror is change. That is the proof. The proof that you have beheld Christ in that mirror is changed. If you are not changing, that means you have not seen Christ in that mirror. What you are seeing is yourself. So, you are in church. You read the Bible. You even teach it. But there is no change. It's an indication that you are yet to see Christ. You can't see him and doubt him. When you see him, you know you have seen him. Ooh, you can be in church and not see Christ. So every morning I come here and say, Lord, let Christ be revealed through this service. Let Christ be revealed. Don't allow religion to be revealed. Don't allow my good looking to be revealed. Don't allow my eloquence to be revealed. Yes, I'm good looking. Don't allow... But let Christ be what revealed. When you're worshipping, let Christ be revealed. When you see Jesus, the world will know you have seen him. Ooh. When you see him, the world will know that you have seen him. When you meet him, the world will know you have met him. Through the pages of scripture, the world will know. They will know that you have met God. That you have met God. Why? Because the, 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 the outcome of that encounter is change. It's change. It's change. Strange transformation. I tell people, I say, if they doubt Apostle Peter, Apostle John, and every other apostle, don't doubt Apostle Paul. Because he was never with Jesus. He never fellowship with him. All he had was an encounter. Paul and the rest, Peter and the rest of them, they had dinner, they had lunch, they ate together, they, they hung, they went for basketball game. They, all, they, they did all that stuff. Yeah, they went swimming, they, they went fishing. They, 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 decided, they, they decided to hang out. But for Apostle Paul, he never touched him physically. Yet, he was willing. He suffered more than anybody else. Why? Because of encounter. Encounter. You can't see him and remain the same. No. That's when you enter to die. To live is Christ. To die is gain. You are crucified. Why? Because you met Jesus. Church, if this is all I say today. When you meet him, everyone will know that you have met Jesus. You can wear, you can be no earring sister, long skirt wearing sister, scarf wearing sister, and terrible because you have not met Jesus. When you meet Jesus, the world will know you have met Jesus. I pray you will meet him. Kalita, when you meet Jesus, the world will know you will be on fire for him. No one will need to preach for you to make him false. He becomes your priority. When you meet him, may you meet this Jesus. Oh, when you meet him, the world will know. Why? Because changes will occur. Changes will occur. The closer you are with Christ, the deeper and the clearer you see. You see him. I have not known him, but I try every day, like Apostle Paul said. Number what? Okay. I think that's it for that. Now, why do we need the lights? We did one, time is gone already. Why do we need the light? We need the light. The first thing I said is to create a new beginning. We have talked about that, right? We need light to create a new beginning. Number two, we need light for liberation. For liberation. For liberation. I know I said this briefly the other day as I was preaching. You see, there's a level or length of years you will be in the house of God that you don't need to line up for deliverance anymore. Please, pardon me. I'm not trying to be arrogant. Yes, I'm not saying men of God should not pray for you. I'm not saying hands should not be laid on you. 
I'm not saying you should not seek higher or anointed man, highly anointed men of God for some specific challenges. There are people that might be going through stuff that you have tried everything you, you, you can, but there's a higher anointing for some people that have paid certain sacrifices to agree with you or lay hands on you and God will give you a miracle. I'm not against that. But what I'm against is for you to think that until you see a man of God, you cannot be delivered. That's a life from the pit of hell. That's a life from the pit of hell. For you to think until the man of God, let me tell you, the word of God can deliver you faster than a man of God. Light! Light is that powerful. I may get in trouble because I'm a spoiled business for some people, but I'm telling you the gospel truth. I am telling you the gospel truth. See, we gain liberation, permanent liberation by light. You can gain liberation, temporal liberation by hands laid and people pray for you. Because the Bible says, if a demon is cast out of a person, the demon will return if he finds the place empty. But when, my, this is not my own translation, but when the demon is chased out by light, he can't come back. Because there's a light dwelling there. Every time he comes in, he sees that there's a light for dominion. It's where I will, I will go there later. For deliverance, liberation. That's what Christ came. And I will show you when he, when, he, when he stated his mission. How he was going to deliver the people. See this. I said that the most sustainable technology for deliverance is deliverance by light. The most sustainable technology is what? For deliverance is deliverance by light. I'm going to say it again. The most sustainable technology for deliverance is deliverance by light or by knowledge. Ye shall know the truth and the truth will set you free. Kali hanasu dete. Hagia. Pelima. It didn't say you shall know a man of God and the man of God shall set you free. He said you shall know the truth and that truth is enough to set you free. You shall know the light and that light is strong enough to set you free. You shall know the truth and the truth shall do what? Shall set you free. So, some of us, the things we are battling with today is not because of who we have not met. It's because of what we have not seen. Kenananatos. He, but, there are things we are dealing with. It's not because of whom we are yet to connect to. It is because of what we are yet to connect to in the word of God. Not whom, but to what? Light. I bring you light. Light. I don't know nobody. I know no man by flesh. Or what is how did Apostle Paul put it? But that's how Apostle Paul put it. We started this church. One powerful man of God came in and then wanted him to come here to bless us. And he told me that, you know, he's here for vacation. He doesn't preach when he comes to America. He's a big man of God. He's late now. I said, okay, thank you so much, sir, at least for picking up my call. I went home. And the Lord told me he will come. I told my wife, I said, the man will come. He said, which man? I said, the man that just told me he's not coming. She said, how? I said, I don't know, but the man will come. I didn't call the person that told me about him. I was at work. Late at night, 11 p.m., my phone rang. The man said, the first question, he said, who are you? I said, oh, it's me, Pastor Henry. I called you earlier. I said, no, who are you? I said, huh? what do you mean? I always get that kind of question when God shows up for me. He said, I couldn't sleep. You, you are, you're all over my head. Please, what do you want me to do? God said, he says, that's what? God said, tell my son to tell you what you will do and you go and do it. You are serving me and that's my assignment. Then we are the small place there. The man, that's how he showed up. He didn't collect any honorarium. He said, I don't want to take what will kill me. Keep the honorarium. I'm telling you people the gospel truth. It's late today. Get up. You know, I don't take pictures with big men of God. I don't do those shows. But if I tell you those I've sat with, those I've met, those I know, those I have their numbers, you won't believe it. Nobody connected me with them. Only one somebody was to connect me was Pastor Paul Enenchi. I met him in business class. And we were chatting. He said, oh, I said, I'm going to Nigeria. But I talked to me, Pastor. He said, give me your number. Blah, blah, blah. Promise me heaven and earth. Promise me heaven and earth. I said, they're chasing this guy. Chasing this guy, chasing this guy, chasing this guy. He told me, today, he said, he's in New York. Then he gave me a number, fake number. Ah. I called one woman, the woman said, ah, I wish I'm Pastor Paul Enenchi, but I'm not Pastor Paul Enenchi. You keep calling my number. So, I landed at Shiloh. Pastor Paul Enenche is walking like this. I stood like this. He paused. He looked at me. He beckoned on me, come. I said, sir, I would like to see you. He said, when? I said, I leave for US in, two, in three days. 
But if I need to extend my ticket, I will do that. I'll be in Abuja. It's okay. Come to Abuja. That's how I went to Abuja. I've seen him several times. No connection. Anybody I want to see, I will see them. If I see the word, I will see anybody I need to see. See the word. You will see solution in the word. All this katikati. You're running here, running there. No! There's something you see in the word of God that changes your mindset. Let me tell you. Those that see light, carry light. What you see reflects in your life. When you see that you're a king, you're a prince in this kingdom, you, you carry yourself like one. You carry yourself like a king. You're not a, I've said it before, you're not a beggar. Anyone that comes in contact with you, you are there to add value to them. It's light. If you don't have that light, you'll be a Christian and then not walk like a queen or a king or a priest. So I said here, that mental breakthrough comes through light. That is what is called mental breakthrough. Because some of us are chasing financial breakthrough, spiritual breakthrough, marital breakthrough. You can have a marital breakthrough and have a marriage breakdown. If you don't have mental breakthrough, a mental breakthrough is, a, is the product of light. That your mindset has changed. When it comes to, some people are attached to money. They need breakthrough. They need lights to know that money is the smallest thing that you should be attached to in this world. There is nothing there. Nothing there, nothing there. I was telling my wife, I say, it's like the wings of, of money is developing. Every time you get to another level in finance, now what will happen? The wings of money will extend. Because, yeah, I said, the way it flies is strange. So if you are attached to money, you will die of depression. Wow. Because it will fly. It will fly. Mental breakthrough is better than any other. And it comes by what? By knowledge. That's what sustains the breakthrough. You have mental breakthrough when it comes to marriage. Breakthrough when it comes to relationship. Breakthroughs when it comes to peace. You see, when we talk about relationship, 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 it's very, very key. See, favor can bring you to a place. But wisdom is what is going to sustain you there. Esther. Mordecai brought her to the king's palace. When she got there, favor brought her in. But she needed wisdom to remain there. If she had not listened to Mordecai, she would not have lasted in that kingdom. So there are places God will take you to by favor. But you need wisdom to remain there. And again, wisdom is what? Light. Light. Then you understand what honor means. When my mentor came here for my birthday, I think the protocol, uh, somebody was speaking. I think it's the board of trustees, right? They are the most powerful hierarchy in this church. But my boss is leaving. I got up and went with him. As a matter of fact, he's the one that said, Henry, it's okay, you can go back inside. We'll head to the car. I said, thank you, sir. And then I left. You think I will sit down here like Jabura? Oh, pardon my word. Sit down here like uh, this thing and just let him walk out, go and all that stuff, and then say, thank you, sir, for coming. No. It's honor. See, if you honor people, people will honor you. You think he just came here before all of us arrived here, sat down there, took a cup of tea. He's a big man. You were at the leadership conference. Any big name, you know. He knows them. But he sat down here. Why? Honor has been invested over the years. That's what sustained the relationship. One time, let me talk to those that are looking for a mentor. Mentor me, mentor me, mentor me. Can you pay the price of mentorship? No, it's a good question. It's a good question. You go every train and say, get mentors, collect mentors. You need mentors, you need mentors. It's flying everywhere. Can you pay the price of mentorship? Sir, it's not money. They are not interested in your money. You know the currency for mentorship as a protege is honor. Honor, 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 honor. Like mental lights, mental breakthrough is what will give you all those things. I was just a boy singing in the choir. I was the music director at Vichy Temple. So they invited us to their church to sing. He was the only first person to open that door. So we went there to sing. The platform on that day was, uh, what's his name? Um, this guy now. Uh, no, Pastor Badu. Badu was to minister in music. We were to minister in music. And then, uh, what's this uh, guy? No, not Travis Green. No, no, it's not a musician. This preacher that is now in, uh, in Atlanta that took the church of this pastor that died. That was in Baltimore. Jamal Brown, thank you very much. Jamal Brown was to speak that night, and then another person was Bishop Pastor Ayo Risojofo was to speak. All of us were to speak on the same platform. Great honor. And then we finished playing. 
problem. I was, yeah, because that's my mentor. He called and said, what happened yesterday? My team told me that one of your musicians went and crossed the altar while they were preaching that he must take his base guitar. He's got to go with his base guitar. So he crossed the altar, dishonored and disrespected his protocol. Who is that young man? I said, sir, I'm sorry. I'm, I knelt down the following day I called off work. I was in Baltimore. Early in the morning, he said, why are you here? I said, sir, I came to say, I'm sorry. I take full responsibility. I had no idea that thing happened. Do you know what that thing did? That very day he looked at me. He said, you're not supposed to be at work. I said, no, I took off work. I have to be here. And guess what? He gave us on already $1,000. That was how choir started making money. <laughs> and then you bring this honor. But honor begets honor. Mental breakthrough. And that's what light does. Light gives you mental. And that mental breakthrough is permanent what? Breakthrough. He said, when I sit in darkness, light will arise for me. Micah chapter 7 verse 8. So it doesn't matter how dark that situation is. When light comes in, you are out of that situation. That's why he said, arise and shine. Why? Because light has entered. Before light comes, you can sit down there. Oh, time is gone. Time is gone. Say, arise and shine for the light has come. Isaiah 60 verse 1. Say, arise and shine. And then they say, why? He said, because the light has come. The reason you'll be sitting, the reason you're not going forward is because the light has not been introduced. But now the light has been introduced, you cannot arise and shine. That's why Micah said, if I sit in darkness, light will arise for me and then show me the way of escape. Somebody shout mental breakthrough. If that's all you get from here, go and acquire mental breakthrough. When you acquire mental breakthrough, you won't be running from one pastor to another, from one prayer line to another, from one meeting to another. No! It's okay if you're a baby Christian. You need to get to a level where you take your life in your hand. Take the word of God. Sit down and settle matters. See, let me tell you. I was in Canada with my wife. And then I was sleeping that very day. And all of a sudden, a strange hand touched me. Tapped me three times. Papa, this year. And I got up. And I looked at my wife. My wife is snoring. So I woke up. I saw him. So I said, did you tap me? He said, why? So I be tapping you. I didn't tap you. I said, you didn't tap me. He said, no. I said, okay. And I was just had an encounter. I rushed into the bathroom. Baby Gazi, Sadabada. Scriptures were coming from Revelations and all that stuff. So I was shooting the scripture, shooting the scripture, shooting the scripture. And then I came back again, sat and I was writing. As I was writing, I was writing on the, on, the, on the hotel bed. My wife fell under anointing. She's there, sobbing. We almost went late to church because I have to pull her out of the anointing. I said, babe, receive peace. Receive peace because by the time you put your makeup and get ready, we might end up late in where we're going to. And we're new here. We came here to collect something. But something happened that very day. But what did I use? I used the word of God. I used the word of God because the enemy came. The tapping was not the enemy. The dream was the enemy. And the Holy Spirit, with his, an invisible hand, tapped me three times. Pa, pa, pa. So getting me up. So when she said no, the dream came back. I said no. And then I went to the bathroom. Gejaya, Lebrus, Peladis. You can speak in tongue if your tongue has no word in it. You will live there as a tongue only. But when you combine tongues with words, you just mess up the enemy. You demystify all their stuff. You know, you confuse the enemy. You confuse the enemy. You confuse them. When you are wounded and you're singing, there is something flowing out of the river. Shall flow river, rivers of living water. It comes from the living word of God. There is something is flowing out because you're singing from the place of revelation. You're not singing from the place of entertainment. Hallelujah. Somebody is free today. I say, somebody is free today. If that sounds like your name, shout a big amen. amen. Proverbs chapter 11, verse 9. True knowledge shall the just be delivered. True knowledge shall the just be delivered. In Luke chapter 4, verse 8, that I, I tried to talk about before, Jesus said in his statement, his mission statement, he said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because he has anointed me to do what? To preach the gospel to the poor. Father, to preach deliverance to the captives. So what does the captive need? To come out of captivity, what? Preaching. Preaching means what? The word of God. To preach deliverance through the word of God. And recovery of sight to the blind. To set at liberty them that are bruised or are under oppression. So we gain liberation by lights. 
what you see, what you can't lose. What you see is what you can't lose. So, um, all right. Let me give you one or two charge. I'm going to wrap up next Sunday. I'll just drop that next Sunday and then we'll leave. One or two charge. I charge you with this. Number one, be a practitioner. Be a practitioner of the revealed word. There are people running around with knowledge. They know everything. Joshua Sermon said. Joshua Sermon said. Bishop Yebuyedepo said. Bishop Abubaka said. Bishop Guru Maharaj said. People know what people say. It's easy to know what they say. Can you do what they did? Everywhere you're chasing, logging on, signing on, they go there by lights. If you get light, people will watch you to tomorrow. So it's not just knowing, but become what? A practitioner, a practicing Christian. Let it become your lifestyle. What you are seeing, leave it. Submit to your husband, leave it. Love your wife as Christ loved the church. That is what I call sacrificial loving. Do it. Don't put it. I've seen all kinds of, you know, jamboree Christians with tie. They are even pastors with, with strange oil on their head. People are pouring oil on them, but they are not doers of the word of God. There are pastors, you can allow money to come near them. They eat the one that belongs to them. They eat the one that does not belong to them. Some of them, you can't allow girls around them. They devour them. No integrity. No integrity. I've been to a pastor's meeting and then I look and say, what is this? See them. They are fighting for chair. Fighting for front row. Fighting for front row. I went somewhere one time. I'm sitting down. This pastor came. I don't know him, but all I know is that he's older than me. And then you see all the pastors. They're sitting down there. Hey, this, this, this. I said, whoa, 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 whoa. what is this? I got up. And I went to the back and sat down. I sat down there. There's a young pastor in Ghana. He also was a victim of it. We had a meeting. Young pastor in Ghana doing an amazing thing. Young pastor. So he saw what I did. I went to the back. And then somebody also came and was forcing, forcing, forcing where he was. And said, no, I left something here. I did it, I did it. Praise and worship is going on. So I, I always stand there. And you know when I go out, I dress very well. I put you in trouble. You don't know who I am. And I don't talk. But when you assess me, finish. If I say excuse me, you give me attention. So the pastor later came to me. He said, where are you from? I said, I'm from the state. He said, I've never seen you. I said, Yeah. I live in the States, United States of America. It's a big place. So I told him where I stay. He said, I'm always in Woodbridge. I've never met you. I said, okay. He said, may I have your number? I gave him my number. That's it. We chat once in a while. Very big young pastor. I won't give you his name. But there's priests in his name. So maybe some of you will know. Fine Ghanaian pastor. Doing great work. So they sat down. So they finished. He left the place and went to the back. The people fighting with him there. Their church is where two or three are gathered. few members. No character. No character. So, become a practitioner of every reveal light. Practice it. That's where you see the reward. The reward is in the application. In this kingdom, application is what makes us have dominion. If you don't apply it, you won't see the light. You won't reflect nothing. Only those that apply it reflect the glory. And may I tell you this, that glory is what God fits on. When you are not giving God glory, you are starving God. You are starving God when God cannot be glorified in your life. Every time you give God glory, you are feeding God. It's not only when you lift your hands. We lift our hands in our sanctuary. We lift our hands to give you the praise. And we will praise the Father. And we will. All this spiritual. Practice the word. Be a practitioner of the word of God. You don't need a title to practice the word. You just need to be a believer. God gives you the power but to will and to do his will. 
in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 8 to 9. TPT. Now, believers, let's read this. If they find it. Ephesians 5, 8 to 9, TPT translation. I know I have just less than one minute. It says, once your life... So, okay, let's all read it together, believers. Let's do this. Want to go? Your life was full of sins, darkness. But now you have the very light of our Lord shining where? through you because of your union with him. Your mission is to live as what? Children flooded with what? His what? We're going to read it again because I know there's a lot of intelligent people here slowly, but read it. Number one, we want to go. Yes, life was full of sin. Your life, sorry, darkness. But now you have the very light of our Lord shining through you because of your union with him. Your mission is to do what? To live as children flooded with his revelation light. Verse 9, Christians. And the supernatural fruit of his light will be seen where? In you, goodness, righteousness, and what? And truth. Goodness, righteousness, and what? And truth. It should be seen inside of you. So my next charge is that you must live a life of uprightness. Be truth to yourself. Be a truth filled person. Be a truthful person. As a Christian, stop all this lying. It's my weakness. It's not your weakness. Light has come. You have power. You have dominion over sin by light. Why? Because sin is one thing that does not allow our light to shine. When we live in sin, it hinders the light. It, it affects the brightness of the light that we have access. So you can have lights, the indwelling light and the revealed light. But if you are living a crooked life, that light cannot shine and God cannot get glory. Some of you grow up in the village or you know somebody from the village or you have watched some village movie. There is what we call lantern that has a round ball. It's part of the things they used to punish us that uses kerosene. And then it has something they put inside of it we, right? Then you strike the matches. A lot of you were raised in the village. I'm glad. <laughs> Cameraman, show them for me. You know, they are, so, so some of you are posing, you know, like you don't know what I'm talking about. Now, there is a way that there will be dark smoke that covers that glass. And then you strike the matches and light it. It will be on, but it will be dark. That is how the life of a believer that is not living an upright life is. The light is in there. But what sin and iniquity does is that it covers the, the globe and you're not able to shine bright enough. So that's why God wants you. So you see this? This is a flashlight. If they can zoom in, the zoomers. If you can zoom in and see this thing uh, in, in any angle. Okay. So this is a flashlight, right? Now look at this light. There's something covering, covering it. I taped it with something. So now I'm going to turn it off. I'm going to turn it on. Can you see light? Yeah. You see light, right? Mr. Miriba, can you see light? Okay. So now you see light, right? Okay, I'm going to turn it off. Can you see light? No. So this is the life of a non-believer. It's blank. Nothing is in there. Dark. So when you remove this now, I'm going to turn this light on again now. What do you see? It shines what? Well. You cover it. The light is dimmed. So you're still struggling, struggling, small, 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 small struggle, small, small pain, small, small sorrow, small, small ache, small, small failure, small, small this. Why? Because you have a small light. But the brighter your light, the faster you go. And the easier life becomes. The sweeter life becomes. I end my message there. God bless you. Oh, light is sweet. Somebody say light is sweet. Somebody say light is sweet, oh. Good light will give you good life. Good life will give you what? Good life.